Hey, welcome back to Planet Zoo. This is Martini4. We're back here at Umqua Valley Zoo. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to Fluffy Green Waffle Cakes uh, for sponsoring the doll sheep habitat. Uh, they left a comment saying that they would like to be a sponsor and we could just shorten it to the Green Foundation. So that's what I've done here. I thank you very much. Uh, I like to see the support and the, the comments and and just you know knowing that I'm doing a good job for you guys so that's awesome so I made these signs that goes all the way up and around the front of the habitat here hanging on all of the, the light posts so if anyone else would like to sponsor a habitat let me know I can make up some more signage and then I also did this little sign here on the doll sheep sign. So, you know, kind of like what they do in a real zoo. They'll have the, the sponsor's, uh, you know, name on there for advertising and stuff. So I appreciate that so much. Uh, first person to, to sponsor a habitat in either of my zoos. So I... Thank you very much, and we will get on to the build. Hey guys, here we are on the speed build of our cougar habitat. This one, uh, yeah, sorry about um, not getting this video out uh, last Saturday, like I've been trying to do, but... Um, we had spring break, so I was a little distracted with the kids and and whatnot. So I didn't really uh, didn't really work on uh, any Planet Zoo stuff. But here we are. We're back. Um, I did uh, have some technical difficulties with the uh, first part of the build here. Um, software issues. I uh, didn't realize I needed to update my recording software and uh, wasn't paying attention and built a lot of the um, building and base work of the habitat uh, without recording anything so that was great but here we are um, so you saw me just put in uh, a few more finishing touches on the rock work uh, just to keep these cougars in place just a little bit don't want them running around the zoo uh, now I'm working on a little guest barrier uh, and once I get it into place I realize that it's way too short and it looks funny <laughs> so I just kind of extend it out a little bit and drag the posts out to fill in the gaps and that looks much better so um, this by no means is is it going to keep cougars in and uh, that little ditch there is uh, fairly shallow compared to what they can jump and climb out of um, but back here uh, we're inside the building um, I just copied the the same uh, fence that I've used in the previous two uh, backstage areas um, if you remember in the last one, there was a stack of panels <laughs> in the, uh, the doll sheep building. So um, I assume they took some of those to bring in here and modified them a little bit. Um, so now um, this actual door here, um, the keepers can't actually use it, I don't think. Um, I haven't seen them actually walk out here because um, they're the habitat gate is inside um, but uh, this is where um, the keepers would access the habitat itself um, if this were in a real zoo and that door is uh, on the keeper side of this fence here um, I tried to 
kind of keep it separated a little bit just to have that extra level of protection um, so if the cougars needed to come back here into their um, like cages or whatnot um, they could close off any exits to the outside world um, to keep them contained so um, and for whatever reason, I don't remember why I uh, did not record <laughs> putting in the uh, fencing and, and stuff. Uh, most of it was just copied from previous builds, but as you see, I have like a track uh, going along uh, the middle of the fencing so that the, the doors could kind of slide open if need be. Um, and you'll see here in a little bit, I have to uh, adjust the doors. So you'll kind of get a better look at that right here. Just kind of, uh, just kind of built some little tracks with the wheels and stuff. Um, yeah, I thought that looked pretty cool. I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't record it to kind of get, give you a better look, but, um, Maybe I'll do a little, uh, like a little tour, live tour. Um, not in this episode, but um, in an upcoming episode. Uh, this one got a little bit long for me to, to walk around like I have done. So now uh, the fence this here is what will keep the cougars inside their habitat. Um, nothing fancy about it, just a big kind of chain link fence, but a little bit more heavy duty there. I needed to make sure that I made it high enough that they wouldn't jump or climb over it. And on the front side, I go back and I do a, a little bit of an incline uh, fencing as well, just to prevent any mishaps. So, yeah, I just kind of uh, just put everything at a, I think it was just a 30 degree angle and just lined it all up. Uh, for me, it's easier to work off of uh, the vertical, um, do a, a line to surface and then run it up and uh, tilt it down and everything. So a little tip for anybody. And then I reuse those um, uh, the donation covers, the like the rock cairns, for this habitat as well. And these conservation panels will be uh, kind of hidden with rock later on. I didn't quite get to it at the time. Um, as usual, I tend to uh, jump around. And most of it's from... Uh, sorry about that. Most of it's from pausing the game, leaving, going to do other things, and then coming back and forgetting where I was. <laughs> so I just start on something new. And then you just saw I just kind of copied over um, the look of the the grizzly bear uh, building there. I thought that like mirroring it uh, was perfect because the, the shape and the sizes were pretty much the same. And then putting up the lettering uh, so we know what building this is. And I just wanted to do um, like, a, like a rock facade on the front side of this building here just to kind of uh, hide it, disguise it a little bit, make it blend into the habitat, which I think it looked uh, really good once it was all said and done. There you saw me go inside the building. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, clipping too far on the other side of the wall and covering up something 
essential. Uh, I didn't really decorate the the uh, backstage area of this too much. Um, I might go back and and finish that up. I was just getting a, a kind of on a, a time crunch. Um, so here I wanted to use this dead tree and have them uh, be able to climb on it and walk on it. So I use the actual uh, wood logs out of the habitat climbing section and put it inside that tree and they'll they'll walk up and down that thing now. So I thought that was a, a pretty cool little trick. I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but um, yeah, you see him just uh, walking on that thing. So that's pretty cool. If anyone uh, wants to use that, go right ahead. And I like putting these these bracken on the walls just to kind of break up uh, the gray. And then using some salt wart and uh, what are these? Uh, crowberry? Is that how it is? Um, I don't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. I always want to say cowberry for some reason. And then some of these hawthorn bushes that I like. And uh, anytime I can use manzanita, I will. Um, I think I've said it before. We use manzanita in aquascaping uh, fish tanks a lot. So <laughs> I like to use it in my habitats too. And then just some of the uh, Virginia creepers just for a little bit of color. And then I threw in a, a bunch of these little um, accent rocks and stuff. Just added detail. Um, still haven't gotten the hang of just laying them all down in one group and then lowering everything at once. Um, I like to have a little bit of control over everything individually. So maybe if I was on a flatter um, like ground level or whatever, that might, uh, I might give that a try. So over here, um, I was checking things out and I did not make the habitat big enough. Uh, and rather than uh, remove a bunch of stuff to uh, enlarge it, I decided to make this little uh, uh, indoor area on this side of the path. So they'll actually walk um, up over uh, the, the guests that are walking on this path right down there. So they'll walk over everyone and into this little indoor uh, area which once I finished it it still wasn't enough uh, traversable terrain so uh, I had to put uh, an outdoor fenced in area um, that's just like an off viewing area on the outside of this building um, so yeah I thought I had everything calculated correctly but uh, apparently I did not and it's probably due to the the rock work inside the habitat with the different uh, terrain heights and stuff so uh, the path um, I w worked on this for a lot longer than I uh, like to admit um, in this part right here I don't know why it gave me so much trouble I, I knew it was the terrain messing it up I just wasn't flattening it out far enough but yeah the only way I could get this to work is if I went underneath a bunch of that rock work so I put up these uh, these barriers that the guests won't go past um, once I get all of these put up um, where I want them then you just lower them down uh, below ground level and you won't get your guests clipping through the rocks and stuff. So a little tip for you there. And then inside this building, um, I just did a concrete floor. I was going to 
Uh, actually, I always was going to do a conf concrete floor. Um, I thought about doing some sort of um, like dirt or something like that, but um, I decided against it since the rest of the like the indoor areas and stuff I have all just concrete. And then here we're going with our uh, skywalk going over top the the uh, guest path. So they come out of the habitat here, over the path and into the building. And yeah, I had to check just to make sure that uh, they could walk across it, that it was traversable, and it is. And then I was gonna use the, uh, like the climbing logs and stuff as supports, but um, I, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, inside the building I do build like a little climbing structure for them to come down on and I use just the the habitat styled um, um, logs and and climbable things there but here since I didn't really want them climbing on everything I just wanted them to walk up the ramp uh, I just use the conservation slats so I um, just made large posts out of them and I kind of make them, uh, I angle them out so they're kind of making a V shape. Which made it a little more difficult to uh, like get the fencing all up tight to it and everything like that and uh, figure out what I was going to do about the wall on the building. but. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I figured it out eventually. Um, and I still don't understand. Um, I'll, I'll build a little section like I'm doing here and then just try to copy it and slide it down the, the straight path that I've already, you know, copied and pasted down. But uh it just gets skewed just a little bit and it really annoys me so then i end up doing it um not really piece by piece but close to it um i don't think i showed it all in here just because it it took a long time for me to to figure it out um at first i didn't know uh, what was going on why it was all crooked and everything but I figured it out and uh, yeah, it just took a little bit longer than it should have. But um, you'll see I extend out into the habitat just a little bit and then put the supports all the way down to the ground, just making them crisscross each other. So I thought that was a, a neat little touch. And then these guys, I just shortened them just to... Uh, so they weren't going down into the path. And then the fence, I had to just um, use the small pieces and tuck them up tight. I tried to make them uh, line up as much as I could, but as usual, there's always a little bit of overlap. And then here, I didn't extend the fencing all the way out, but I had to have the supports. So, yeah, I think it, it still looks pretty good. I like the way it... Uh, turned out but after I got it all done um, <laughs> I was thinking there's nothing really holding it up so I put the supports underneath it and it just that little bit just makes it look a lot better to me it's kind of surprising how uh, one little thing one little detail will really change how things feel and how they look so yeah, and then over here you can see the little climbing structure I built just to uh, get them down. And I didn't really put anything in there other than the uh, the bedding. And I think I went back and put in one more little like enrichment toy. Um, I don't remember what it's called. It's like the, the scented bag on the pole or something. Uh, I didn't want to put uh, anything with food over here. 
because the keepers wouldn't be able to get to it. Which is uh, <laughs> uh, kind of ironic because the keeper hut is right there. Um, that little roof that you see, that's the keeper hut for this habitat. <laughs> but they can't actually go into this area. Um, the roof was a, a little bit tricky because I didn't have everything um, symmetrical. So I... Um, I just made one section of it higher and then just put in some some windows just to add some extra, extra lighting inside there so uh, it worked out it was kind of how I wanted it to begin with but um, I just kind of uh, lucked out on you know I didn't plan it that way <laughs> so it was just a, a happy little accident I'm going to put trim around all the windows. Uh, I don't show all of it because it gets pretty boring and tedious. Uh, luckily, most of these were um, the same size, so I could just uh, copy and slide things over. And I decided to use the gutters on this one as well. Um, just to add that extra little touch of realism. You don't want the rain dripping down on the guest's head. So, um, yeah, and I, I moved everything around to actually make it look like it was attached to something. And, and all that good stuff. And it was kind of like perfect. There's a little bitty patch of grass right there where maybe the water splashes out and the grass started growing uh, out of the path <laughs> and then I build my little sign here for Cougar Corner um, not to be confused with your best friend's hot mom's hangout place And I used the two different colors there just so you can't really see it very well uh, in this lighting but it does make it pop out just a little bit uh, more than it it would with just a flat white color there and then I had to add a little support for my sign in the back and from there I realized that stuff was poking through the bottom <laughs> so had to cover that up um, and I continue that inside the building as well because there's a lot more stuff um, you can see there the dormers that I that I put on um, poking through and everything so just kind of covering all that up and then I realized I didn't do any buffalo grass in here so I go back and I replace all or put all that in in all the normal sections and stuff so try to leave uh, some natural pathways and and whatnot that the animals would walk down and then just try to kind of make it overgrown where maybe they don't uh, don't venture out into very often. And then I add some dirt in just to to make it look like they've worn out a path. And then I made these custom uh, these custom planters here around the poles. Um, I needed something to kind of dress this place up a little bit. I was going to use like some flower pots and stuff, but I um, opted to just build these little planters. And these white flowers looked, looked nice to me. I don't remember what they're called either. Um, I keep saying I need to write this stuff down and I keep not doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that looked pretty cool. 
Uh, I was going to change some of the colors on some of the those uh, conservation slats, but uh, after I got them all into place, um, I liked the, the natural color that they already had, so I just kind of left it um, rather than change it to match everything else. So maybe they were like an afterthought and they used newer wood it just hasn't aged yet. And this here, this is the the added fenced in area. I did use the go away green fences off the workshop. Um, this isn't a viewing um, area so it's just kind of a, a, a place where the cougars can go to get away from the guests or if maybe they need to separate someone they can lock them out here so they can still get some fresh air and sunshine um, and yeah um, like I said it was just the the games um, uh, traversable terrain that I needed so I had to do that but and then just using some Oceania fences as kind of a uh, planter uh, border. And then I flip the flowers upside down to have this nice light colored dirt so that I could plant some things in here, make it look a little bit nicer. So, um, and I don't remember what these bushes are called here, these little trees or bushes but I like how they're they're kind of flat on one side so they fit up against the fence really well so I ended up using two of those just to kind of hide that fence a little bit more um, but yeah that's about it for this video um, you see my custom cougar sign there uh, I will have to go back and record a little live walkthrough for y'all because there is quite a bit that uh, didn't get shown on the video that I'd like to kind of show off. Um, so we got some cinematics here. See the little cougar cub walking across the skywalk there. Yeah, they they uh, utilize this a lot. I was surprised at how often they walk back and forth across this. So. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys finish this out. Uh, I appreciate everyone that has commented and watched these videos and uh, keeps me going. So if you haven't yet, uh, hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. I'm about three people away from hitting 100. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Um, hit the like, uh, leave a comment if you want to uh, sponsor a habitat uh, just go to that video and drop me a comment tell me you would like to sponsor the habitat and tell me what name you want to use uh, keep it PG please and I will make up some signs and place it on there and showcase it on the following video so I will see you guys on the next one thanks bye